Whenever governments and religions merge, the results are disastrous for freedom and prosperity. This Palestinian children's program is a shining example of this. <laughs> وسنحرر العراق إن شاء الله وسنحرر بلاد المسلمين التي تشتاحها هذه الأثناء القتلة سننتصر يا بوش وسننتصر يا شرون يا شرون مات خلاص السلامة سننتصر يا أولمر سننتصر يا يا كوندريزا شو حتفدي يعني روحك من أجل الأقصى شو هتعملي حطوخ احنا بدنا تكون على اليهود احنا بدنا ندافع عن الاقصى بارواحنا ودمائنا ولا لا يا سنابل نحرر وبعدين هذا حفظناها وبعدين As always, we give you the letters R, T, S, L, and E. We just need three more consonants and a vowel. Okay, I'd like a B, an N, and a G. And the vowel? An O, please. Okay, well, looks like you're going to get a lot of help here. Category is people who annoy you. Audience, keep quiet, please. Uh, well... Ten seconds, Mr. Marsh. I know it, but I don't think I should say it. Five seconds, Mr. Marsh. All right, I'd like to solve the puzzle. Niggers! Uh... Huh? Oh. Ooh. Oh, naggers, of course. Naggers. Right. Uh, can we cut to, uh, can we cut to a... Well, it might be funny on South Park. Racism is an ugly reality. Just surfing YouTube will turn up dozens of videos made by people who hate others simply because of their skin color, religion, or personal lifestyle. There's people who hate blacks and Mexicans. Homosexuals. The homosexual haters are particularly interesting as they bring God into the equation. And of course there are people who hate Jews. Undoubtedly some of these YouTubers may be just trying to make funny videos, but many of them mean what they say. They really hate their fellow human beings. I hate black people. Hey, uh, I hate black people. I hate Mexicans. I hate Indians and Jews. Uh, it's my God-given uh, constitutional right to do so, and uh, my speech is full of hate. Uh, and I have a right to freedom of speech. That much is true. It is his constitutional right, and as despicable as these people and their statements may be, they have a right to freedom of speech. If we take away their right to free speech, we also take away everyone else's. Luckily, it's only a very small percentage of the population that thinks this way. Many more people show up to protest Ku Klux Klan rallies than those who participate in them. But you'd never know that, according to the media. This is a largely white, almost no minorities in this crowd. Um, and they're here uh, because they love Sarah Palin. Well, they look like a white crowd to me. Let's go back to uh, Joan Walsh. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but it is pretty uh, <laughs> monochromatic up there. Yes. Uh, Joan, uh, no surprise in terms of the ethnic nature of the people showing up. Nothing wrong with that, but it is a fact. I think there's a tribal aspect to this thing. In other words, white versus other people. 
And I wonder whether there's an aspect near of not documentation, but pigmentation that this is all about. Would they be doing this to a George W. Bush? No. To I, a, uh, would they be doing it to a Ronald Reagan, somebody who's white? I think it is racial. It lets you uh, talk about his father, a Muslim. It lets you use the name Hussein, which is scary. I'll go farther since it's late night hardball, and I'll say it focuses you on the, the status of his birth, which was to a white mother and a black okay. father. So it even gets you into the taboo of interracial sex. After spending months of broadcasting, calling any opponent of Obama's agenda a racist, MSNBC's Chris Matthews made a scandalous comment immediately following President Obama's 2010 State of the Union address. MSNBC's Chris Matthews said that while watching President Barack Obama, he forgot he was black. I was trying to think about who he was tonight, and uh, it's interesting. He is post-racial by all appearances. Uh, you know, I forgot he was black tonight for an hour. And it doesn't stop with the news media. Nowadays, if you are racist, you're probably a Republican. <laughs> I thought when we elected a black president, we were going to get a black president. I, you know, this is where I want a real black president. I want him in a meeting with the BP CEOs, you know, where he lifts up his shirt so they can see the gun in his pants. That's, we got a motherfucking problem here, you know, and shoot somebody in the foot. I want to... <laughs> Until the last century, the slave trade was widespread in Africa. For centuries, the stronger African tribes captured and enslaved weaker ones and sold them for slaves all over the world. Many of these slaves were taken to America. The captives were packed into ships like sardines and shipped across the Atlantic Ocean to the Caribbean islands. Many of them died from starvation, dehydration, and disease. They were then transported to America, where they were sold at auction to rich white plantation owners in the antebellum South. Although many American people were opposed to slavery, it was promoted in the schools, and generation after generation justified ownership of slaves. As time passed, there were more and more people who opposed slavery. And finally, after a bloody civil war, all American slaves were freed. Some of the freed slaves chose to return to Africa, where they set up the nation of Liberia, named for liberty. Ironically, the Liberians took their own slaves almost immediately, and the practice continued in that country for years. Liberia is currently the world's fourth poorest country and slavery is still widespread in Africa, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia. Although they were no longer slaves after the Civil War, American blacks found little freedom in the decades that followed. The cruel and deliberate oppression of African Americans took effect immediately, and by the early 1900s multiple plans were in the works to further demoralize black people. The 1920s saw the glorification of the science of eugenics, which was spearheaded in America by Margaret Sanger. Sanger was a proponent of birth control and a strong advocate of abortion. The Rockefeller family and numerous other private foundations of the global elite funded Sanger's work. In 1921, Sanger founded the American Birth Control League, which later became Planned Parenthood. Sanger looked upon blacks and other minorities as inferior. She called them worthless weeds and advocated for their extermination. As she gained notoriety, Sanger penned letters to Adolf Hitler, which Hitler returned with his own letters of praise for her. In 1932, the U.S. government began a series of unethical and immoral medical studies which are now collectively known as the Tuskegee Experiment. This entailed government doctors deliberately not diagnosing blacks who had syphilis, but studying them instead to learn more about the disease. Poor rural blacks were also intentionally given syphilis under this program. This inhumane experimentation continued until at least 1972. 
Almost a century after she began her crusade, there are schools and libraries all over America named for Margaret Sanger, many of which are in black neighborhoods. To this day, public school students are taught that Sanger was a tremendous friend to the black people. Sanger's Planned Parenthood has become the largest abortion provider in the world. There are clinics operating in almost every city in America. The majority of them are located in the neighborhoods with the highest numbers of blacks, Hispanics, and other minorities. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is currently the biggest private financial supporter of Planned Parenthood. Fifty-five million abortions have been performed in America since the Roe v. Wade decision. An astounding number of these abortions have been done on black people. That because unfortunately, uh, I don't know what it takes to, to get people to see the obvious. It seems like the humanity is very gifted at hiding from something that's obviously true. I mean, in this country we had slavery for God knows how long. And now we look back on it and we say, well, how blind were they? You know, what was the matter with it? You know, I can't believe, I mean, for me, it's like, well, this is incredible. And uh, we're right. We're right. We should look back on that with criticism. It is a crushing mark on America's soul. And yet today, half of all black children are aborted. Half of all black children are aborted. Far more black children, far more of the African-American community is being devastated by the policies of today than we're being devastated by the policies of slavery. And I think, what does it take to get us to wake up? The elite don't want us to wake up. Their plan is well underway. Margaret Sanger's work is still going on, and they have succeeded in exterminating half of the black babies in the United States over the past three decades.